Hi everyone, Spider-Man1991 here to do my comics for the week. It's going to be a short video because I only have three titles to pick up. First off, my usual Amazing Spider-Man issue. This issue is actually very is very good. It's helping. Me, it's really encouraging me to stick around for the end of Origin of Species because now, after Lily, ha Lily gave birth to little baby Osborne, Spidey is able to get get out of Doc Ock's grasp long enough for him to get the baby and run out. However, though he's caught by web. However, he's caught by a helicopter passing by, and then all of a sudden it spread over the news that Spider-Man stole a baby, which is just bad news. Not only that, but he also has a vi when he gets to a hospital, Electro shows up, and so pretty much now all now pretty much Doc Ock has super villains around every corner, as well as millions of Manhattanites get ticked off at Spider-Man because they don't understand who the child who's the who the child's father is. And of course, they all assume that Spider-Man is a kidnapper, and they get, and now everyone hates him and will report him if they see him, which is basically another bonus to Ox plan. So at the end of the story, Spider-Man's still trying to find a safe place to put the baby, and he and he has super villains around every corner as well as every single New Yorker being on the lookout for him. So advantage, Doctor, advantage, Doctor Octopus. Okay, so far Origin of Species has been two parts, and I have not been this excited for a Spider-Man story since American Son. And this, and this is still pretty amazing. I would highly recommend picking this up. Alright, now for DC. Batman Beyond number four. Okay, this I can be pretty brief about because, well, Hush's identity is revealed. The new Hush, his identity is revealed. And I want to give that away. In fact, I really don't want to give parts of any of the story away. Well, actually, I can give a little bit of the beginning away, as seen here. Bruce does manage to check out, test out one of the bat wraiths, and also it's learned that the cat, the new Catwoman, has some sort of duplication power or device. But Bruce's bat wraith, wraith is far from perfect, as it break. Oh, and also this is pretty, this can pretty much tell you what, why Dick Grayson. Quit being Nightwing. Unfortunately, the Bat Wraith Bruce is testing out has some flaws, and Hush is able to dismantle and steal some parts. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to say about this issue. Overall, what? But of the stuff I didn't say, such as Hush's identity, it's a major twist added to the story. And if you read it, you'll probably either be interested or you would be very, very mad because it involves a character from Bruce's past. And if you do know who it is, do not leave it in the comments, okay? I hate when people do that. It's annoying when people do that in the comments when they just write, immediately say, Oh, you mean it was really... No, no, don't do that. That's just rude to everyone else who hasn't read it or rude to anyone else who hasn't read the series so far yet. Still, Batman Beyond is a great series is a great series so far and I heard it's ongoing so I might stick around for that. Alright now, Brightest Day number 10. We finally get into this one only features two characters, Aqualad and Firestorm. Now we learn that the Firestorm age, that now Firestorm's powers can only work on this chemical if both Ronnie and Jason know the chemical formulas. And Jason and apparently now the Matrix is evolving, as seen here when Firestorm takes off his glove. And when and that apparently Professor Stunt and apparently the Matrix is also ca a captured spark of the Big Bang. And if they argue, then they could risk restarting the universe, which is just bad news. And for the Aqualad story, Jackson Lake is taken to a cabin with, by his father and he's learn and he learns that Mara was the one who gave who gave young Jackson to them. As well as a chest that apparently he it's apparently supposed to help him. And unfortunately their moment gets ruined when Black Manta shows up. And Jackson's father drives them in over into a lake, which then immediately activates Jackson's powers, so he's able to fend off Manta for a moment. And, and, and right when Manta's about to get shoot a killing blow into Jackson Jackson's dad. Aquaman shows up, and I like this moment where Aquaman just shows up, and then they both look at each other, and Manta's like, 
Aquaman. Aquaman, Manta. And we get a nice, and I'm really hoping to see a fight with, between them next issue. And then Professor Stein reveals to them that some, that something is causing, that if something happens to the Matrix, if they argue and disagree, then the Matrix will be, will blow up, blow up the entire universe, leaving only Jason and Ronnie, and the Black Lantern Firestorm, who is now, who is now able to come out, and reveal, and reveal himself to Professor Stein. Say next, so next issue we've got the Black Lan Lantern Firestorm, or as they're advertising it, I guess Death Storm. Okay, Bright Day number ten. I'm still. This really has. This series, it's kind of been an on-off thing for me so far. I mean, some issues have been dull, but with very good endings that make me want to stick around. Uh, this whole issue, though, it has made me really want to stick around for the re to see where this is going. I want to see what Firestorm involves too. Want to see what ha Want to see how. Firestorm completes his mission, and I want to see if Aquaman is able to complete his to get their lives back. Alright, so, Brad's Day was still a pretty awesome read. Okay, that's it. This was probably my shortest review in a while. So, Spider-Man 1991 saying, see you later.